Hi there, this is Stuart Bruzik for Digital Sandwich. Today, I'm going to show you how to remove an object in a shot using some simple techniques and tools within Nuke. Let's take a look at the footage. Alright, so this is our shot right here. And as you can see, we have a pan from the right to the left. And we have some pretty heavy grain, as well as a rack focus in the middle of it. And the client or customer, whatever it may be, have come to us and asked us to remove this red and blue makeup case and would like it to look something like this. Seems easy enough. Um, there's many different ways to do it, but I'm going to show you a way to do it with a nuke that hopefully will go very quick and will be relatively painless. So let's open up nuke and import our footage in. I am going to be working linearly just because I know that that is what this footage likes. And I'll just set up all my project settings here. All right, so we have 100 frames. The footage is all set up. And the first thing I'm going to do is attach a tracker to it go to the first frame and look and set up our tracker to follow the makeup piece uh, object throughout the shot and then what I'm going to do is just hit track should be easy enough for Nuke to follow that along since it's fairly uh, bright in the shot and there's no real crazy camera movements. Um, if you do have a crazy camera move in your shot then you might need to use some hand tracking or something like that to get the results that we should hopefully be getting in this tutorial but otherwise uh, this is going to be really the easiest way for us to kind of set up our rotor shape and follow the shape without having to do, go in and do a lot of hand animating, which can get a little tedious at times. So now that that is done, it looks like we should have a pretty good solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach that. I'm going to go back to the first frame in our shot zoom in here. I'm going to make a roto shape, attach it to our tracker, and now I am going to draw a nice little shape around the case. Uh, it does get a little difficult here since there is um, a little bleeding into the standing up little makeup guy, but we're just going to roll with it just like that. And so now once I do that, I'm going to hold Command or Control, I believe it is. Maybe Alt, I'm not 100% sure on that, on the uh, PC. And I'm going to drag out the um, the edges of this rotor shape just to soften up the shape a little bit. And I'm also going to add a blur on top of that on to, we'll just put seven for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our tracker node, I'm going to click the transform tab, and I'm going to hit set to this frame, which should go right to the frame that we're on, and then change the transform mode to match move. And that is all we need to do on that. So now if we make a merge and view that, and then turn it off, but view our rotor shape, we should see our shape following along in our shot fairly easily, which is why we tracked it and didn't animate it, because we just got all that information for free. I like to use the merge off, because if you try to just view your footage and double click it, like it's not going to be moving, right? So this is just a way, as long as you're downstream from both 
like your footage and your rotor shape, it will be following along, which is useful at times. All right, so now we are going to create a key mix node, and you may have used one of these before for like uh, using in keys and whatnot, but we are going to be using it in a little different way that you may be familiar with. So we're going to attach the B pipe to the footage and the mask to our rotor shape. And then we're going to create a transform by hitting T. And we're going to attach the A pipe to that. And then we're going to attach the transform to our footage. So if we look at that, it's this is our basic setups for now. And this is really all we're going to need. So now I will just drag that down. I will view the key mix. And since we have done, we have not moved it in any way. We have not moved or transformed, that is. Um, we won't see any change. But if we go into our transform, and you may want to change your, uh, no, no, um, no. You hold command and you can move your center point just so that might be a little easier to view. But what we're going to do is we're going to go minus 50. Um, 50. And I keep going until that's out of frame. And move that down a little bit like that. So all I've done is just moved the footage, which is this, over to the screen left, 210 pixels, just like that. And then I am putting it back over the original footage, like so. So if we kind of page through, we see that we have a pretty decent patch within a few minutes and what we can do now is we can kind of go in and we can kind of go okay well I kind of see the patch in there so I might want to you know drag these points out a little bit more just to smooth it out and hopefully get a better transition in there you don't really want to go too far on this side just because you don't want to get rid of that object and you don't want to go too far in here or else just start getting stuff like that to show up. So it's just a fine balance of get, getting what you can out of there. All right, so now when we page through, it looks good. And that is really the idea. You can use this for multiple different um, shots like you can use it to get rid of tracking markers so then you have a solid green screen or blue screen that you're trying to key and really like it's just a it's a very very useful tool that um, may not be 100% needed in every shot but it's just a very good tool to have in your back pocket just in case a situation like this comes around that you can have a quick turnaround on a otherwise difficult shot all right Thank you very much. This has been a digital sandwich tutorial. Be sure to come back and check out all of the great tutorials on digitalsandwich.net that Glenn, Jason, and Matt cook up for you guys. And have a great one.